The year was 2006, and Toronto became privy to what has since been called Mighty Cool, Wonderful, Adrenaline Dripping, a musty event. The Toronto After Dark Film Festival was born. The festival showcased the best sci-fi, horror, and fantasy films not yet seen by Toronto audiences. In 2007, the festival returned, bringing genre film fans more of what they desired most. And it continued, year after year, supplying genre film fans with some of the greatest Canadian and international horror, sci-fi, action, and cult movies available. But 2011 saw something different. Along with the standard films, audiences were also treated to the diaper rating. But where did this diaper rating come from? What did it mean? Many speculated, perhaps it was a rating of how shitty the movies were. Perhaps it was the opposite and just rated how good a movie was, man. We figure it's a combination of the two. The diaper rating indicated how many diapers you were going to fill with your own filth. That's right, how many times would you shit your pants due to the thrills, chills, and spills on screen? This is Toronto After Dark 2011. Fantastic collection put together by Peter Kapowski, a fantastic short film program. 
And um, at 4.15, Red Line, a very cool Japanese anime. Come and see that, it is fully cranked up, crazy, energetic, uh, animated film. And you just got to see it uh, on the big screen. Okay, a um, few thank yous before we get into our films. Please give it up for Anchor Bay Entertainment. We love you guys. Our volunteers and our host, the Trial Underground Cinema. Thanks, guys. Um, and now let's talk about some movies. First up, we have a terrific short film playing tonight called Prick by a filmmaker, Colin Bailey. Let's bring up Colin to introduce his film. Come on, tell us about Prick. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming up. Great to be here at uh, this particular event. Wonderful to see all your smiling, beautiful faces. Um, it's uh, a real privilege to be screening at this event here, so a huge thank you to everybody at uh, Toronto Actor for selecting us and giving us our very first audience. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Of course, I wouldn't have anything to offer up unto you were it not for the extremely talented professionals and friends uh, who make up the cast and crew of Prick. So, uh, without any further ado, please enjoy the show. And we know that you're here for a very special feature, and I just wanted to say a couple of words about this film before I uh, bring up someone to talk about it. Um, this is fantastic. Yeah. We have been searching for great Canadian feature films since we started Toronto After Dark six years ago. Something amazing happened this year. We found five, not just one, but five amazing Canadian feature films. Two from the same company. Uh, actually, two sets of two from two different companies. But the four side pictures were so talented. Um, and, you know, all, I know a lot of you have been supporting this film. We're excited to be presenting it as well. Um, it's a zombie movie, but it's a different kind of zombie movie, and it's really special. And I think uh, it would be great to have the director come and introduce it to you and tell you exactly why it's a very special kind of zombie movie. So please give it up for John Dennis. here. Uh, we've been all over Europe for the past three weeks. We just had our USA premiere in Hollywood. Um, so we're, this, is our, this is our homecoming. It's the first time everyone that made this film is actually here with us. So uh, I just want to first give a huge call out to the cast and crew. Majority of them are here. The wonderful Dee Wallace is here with us. And like I said, the majority of our cast and crew are here with us who put in literally 500% every single day making this film. Um, it, it is a special zombie film, it's a very personal film to me. Um, it's a labor of love, it was, a, it was a collection of best friends making this film. And I always wanted to make a zombie film, the tradition of a, an old western, would also combine elements of fantasy. And uh, I think above all it's a story about hope and survival, so uh, please enjoy. It's, it's, it's a two hour film, but it's, uh, it's a really magical story. So um, yeah, again, thank you Toronto After Dark, thank you Anchor Bay. Thank you to my friends, family, everyone in the film, my fiance, Allison Smith, thank you. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you. And Josh is going to be back for a Q&A, and we're going to have a Q&A with the cast and crew, so stay around for that, it's going to be very, very special. Um, and a uh, very last couple of messages. This film is eligible for our Audience Choice Award, as are all the feature films playing at Toronto After Dark, so you've hopefully been given little vote slips. Uh, you can also pick them up on your way out, and you can tear uh, five if you love the film, and one if not so much, but uh, these things do matter, and films that win the Audience Choice Award, and we give out gold, silver, and bronze, so there's three chances to get a, uh, an award, um, do go on to get uh, greater buzz, greater publicity, and distribution, so it really does uh, make a big difference. Finally, um, if you could turn off your cell phones, anything digital, anything that goes bleep, anything that uh, might glow, please no glowing screens. It is a huge pet peeve of mine, and I'm sure a lot of you fans too. Uh, we really try and encourage people to turn off uh, anything that might uh, distract from the film. And that's about it. Stick around for uh, a Q&A afterwards with the filmmakers. Otherwise, enjoy a terrific short film prick, followed by Exit Humanity. Cheers. We'll see you.
there is a time I want nothing more than just to get to tomorrow. I thought I had survived the worst of days. Ain't no one can teach you how to take the life of another man. But you learn how and you live with that. I said, what is your name, boy? Edward Young. You used to fight with us? Can't kill a man who's already dead. I kill lots of men who are already dead. They're witness out one by one. This is beyond my understanding. I'm scared, sir. It is fear that has kept you and me alive this long. I know we can go. There are bigger forces at work here than you will ever. If this is the humanity that is left, then... I need an exit. Of Exit Humanity. And I just want to, a couple of notes I wanted to mention. Um, partly because of that, we are running a little bit behind tonight. We do have another screening coming up for uh, a whole different set of filmmakers uh, straight after this. Technically, it's supposed to start um, at 9.45. Um, the only way we're going to get even close to that start time is if I can ask you on behalf of the festival and all my staff and volunteers to help us out with just a couple of things. Uh, number one, if you could please kindly take uh, your garbage and anything you brought with you, that will save us cleaning the house and we'll be able to start lots of your own time. So that would be the first thing. Secondly, if you can bear with us, um, we are going to have a compact uh, question session here with the filmmakers. It'll be just about 10 minutes long. I'll be hosting that myself here and we'll keep the questions on stage, unfortunately, because we're trying to keep things on track. We won't be opening it to the floor. Um, but you will be able to track down these filmmakers, I'm sure, through various channels afterwards and um, catch up with them that way. So we are gonna, but we are gonna have them on stage for a little fun introduction now. So please welcome to the stage without any further ado, the very talented director, John Gennis. everyone here that's been a part of this film up here. Uh, first and foremost, Jesse Cook, my bro, Matt Wheely, Cody Callahan, my brothers in crime for years. So you guys get up here and everyone else. Hey, round the four brothers, Dave Price, for Jeff for Bill, my guys. You guys know who you are, so please come up with me. And uh, come on up, mate. Let's see you later. The wonderful and beautiful D. Wallace, please come up. Dee. 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 Okay, I guess, I guess that's everyone, I don't know. Um, well, I guess the, the most obvious question is, where did you come up with this idea for 
a period piece zombie film with <laughs> stunning animated sequences yeah, yeah. and uh, everything else that was so wonderful about this film. Um, well, I've always been a huge fan of drama films. Some of my favorite films are Braveheart, Dances with Wolves, films that really touched my soul. And uh, I always thought, you know, I want to. Life is short, and I want to take every chance I can. If I'm going to make a film, I want to make it with meaning and you know inject any kind of meaning I can. Um, even in a world of zombies, if you can create a message of hope and love uh, amongst the world of zombies, I think that's something cool. So, um, and many zombie films have that. Um, um, so, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I was watching Jeremiah Johnson one day, and I was like, "This is such a cool movie. It's, uh, it's such a despairing story about a guy just, you know, he's lived the Civil War. He moves to the hills, starts a family, and then the Indians kill his family, and then they kill his second family." And I just thought, "Wow, what a..." A really rough life. <laughs> I thought this would be a really cool zombie movie. <laughs> yeah. And I think the audience agrees, right? Yeah. I also love fantasy. Um, I love fantasy films like Never Ending Story, Lord of the Rings. I thought it'd be cool to combine the two. And that's how the, the journal and the animation, uh, the genesis of that, came to be. Um, was I just thought it'd be cool to have a character who's documenting what he's witnessing is the whole film um, and you know diving into these animated sequences. It was also dictated by the budget. Uh, a lot of that inspiration was like, we don't have a lot of money, so how can we make this cool? <laughs> I thought, let's just hire an animator. But um, in retrospect, I underestimated how hard animation is and how grueling and time consuming it is. So um, this will be my last animated. <laughs> Why don't we ask Dee uh, what it was like to get involved with these guys and to work with them on this project? It was absolutely awesome. It was. They're all so creative and so conscious and just uh, what they did uh, for me is what every young filmmaker should aspire to, really, is the, the depth of the creativity and what they put on that screen for the money that they had is Nothing short of brilliant, and I'm very, very proud to be a part of it. Well, I must quickly say, um, this film is truly, um, you know, uh, truly owed to everyone here on stage. I mean, everyone put in, as I said earlier, 300% every day. We, when you watch the film, those elements were real. We worked, um, you know, in the most grueling conditions. Yeah. If it wasn't rain, it was snow, it was ice, it was, you know, wind, um, and everyone just came together and everyone had a common goal to, to succeed, and uh, I really just want to salute all of you guys for standing by me this whole time. Truly. Um, truly grateful. Yeah. And there were moments of, uh, there were moments of true despair in this film. I mean, we throw a schedule out day one, I mean, when you want it to be perfectly sunny, it's rainy. You want it to be rainy, it's sunny. So we threw a schedule at day one and we just let the skies dictate our schedule. Um, we got up at sunrises to get those cool, you know, those magic hour shots and we shot at sunsets to get those beautiful sunset shots. So we really went out of our way to make this film look beautiful, um, given our budget and circumstances. But, you know, the actors, wow, I mean, geez. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Ari Millen uh, played Wayne, Mark Gibson the lead, who's my Woo! dear friend. We've been talking about making a film together for 10 years, or about 8 years. Uh, I went to see this guy in a play at York University 8 years ago, and I was like, dude, we're going to get an XL1, and we're going to shoot this crazy movie with you and your girlfriend, and we're here now, finally, um, and what a talent. This guy is uh, my buddy Jason Brown right here. This guy played Roy, but he, he didn't just play Roy, he built every single set on this film. Uh, and he played all the sets on Monster Ball. So this guy is Jason Brown. He was uh, you know, an absolute childhood dream of mine. Uh, just incredible to work with you, Dee. Um, wow. I mean, I, I wrote this, you know, when I, when I was writing the script, I was like, I really think this, this would be a great role for Dee Wallace, and you know, I, I, I was aware of your book and, and, and your 
whole spiritual, um, you know, your beliefs and stuff. And I was like, I think this would be really good for her. And I thought it was too good to be true, but it wasn't. She uh, she really liked it, and she came on board. So. Yeah. Uh, the four brothers have been with us from day one. Composers, Nate Christworth, right here. Yeah. I met these guys literally, uh, this is not the score quickly. I met these guys like two months ago and came to them with this film. I was like, man, this score's gotta be huge, it's gotta be real. We gotta record live instruments, violas, you know, uh, violins, cellos, timpanies, everything else. And they were like, dude, like you got like a grand we <laughs> uh, somehow pulled it off, and uh, as you guys heard the score, it was magnificent. So, thank you. The producers, of course, my brother in arms, Jesse Cook, Matt Wheely, Cody Callahan. Adam Siebel, where is Siebel? Adam Siebel, wow. Adam Siebel played Isaac, and I met him through Mark. Um, they were did theater stuff together, and met, the day I met this guy, we were drinking pints. I was like, this guy's Isaac. And it blew my mind. Jordan Hayes, amazing. main goal is to really create an amazing cast, not just great actors, but friends. So when you're living in mud and sweat and rain and smell, it's nice to be, you know, friends. The awesome! Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've got time for uh, just one, one thing I wanted to throw about this. I think we should really uh, ask your lead actor what it was like to, to have this wonderful, but very challenging role. One of the great things that's been coming out in the early reviews, I think you've all hopefully seen them, for this film is how much uh, this film also hinges very much on a very strong lead performance. And what a terrific <laughs> Seems like it was a very grueling experience. Um, yeah, it, it definitely was. It started with a beard, um, <laughs> a four-month beard I grew in the summer, <laughs> and um, it was terrible conditions. It was cold, wet, constantly, and uh, he kind of threw me in rivers and creeks. And I was upset and miserable all the time, and he just yelled action, and uh, that's about it. <laughs> Stood there and didn't smile, and the Gore Brothers made me look sad. <laughs>